Well, hello. Welcome once again to our Alphatron channel. Today we'd like to show you a small demonstration of our Alphatron tracking cameras. As you can see on the board behind me, there's uh, three models available. There's a 12X and a 20X version available that features an HDMI output, USB output, as well as a network interface uh, that all our cameras, all our PTZ cameras have. Uh, also, uh, the 20X model in the SDI version features SDI outputs and uh, network outputs as well. And the SDI model also actually features uh, power over ethernet. So you can power the camera remotely from your PoE switch. Now the camera features uh, essentially two cameras. The one camera is a PTZ camera and the second camera is what we refer to as the panoramic view or the panoramic camera. That's really a, a wide angle view. Now, as you saw when I walked into frame right in the beginning, uh, the camera basically zoomed and started tracking me. So if I, if I just move around the, the space here, you'll see that the camera will track me. If I move over to the other side here, it should follow me quite nicely. And uh, all the way I was inside the tracking area that we've set up for the camera. Now, what would happen is if the camera basically loses target, if I, if I walk out of the tracking area, which again we'll show you in the software in just a moment, you'll see that the camera will actually return back to a wide view uh, that we've preset on the camera. So I'm gonna just walk off frame for a second and I'm gonna basically stand off on the side here. And as I come out of frame, it takes a few seconds and the camera goes back to a panoramic view. All right, and now it's in the panoramic view. And once I move back into frame in front of the camera, the camera will pick me up again and start tracking me again in the center of the room. Okay, so that's uh, just a short overview of the cameras. And uh, we'll move over now to the Alphatron tracking software. Well, let's now take a look at the Alphatron tracking camera software. Firstly, you can download the software from our website under the camera's product page and the resources. It will be available there as a download to the software installation file. Then once you have downloaded and installed the tracking software, you can launch into the tracking software. Please make sure that you have configured the camera as per our network setup guides so that it is on the same network segment that your IP network is set to, or your network switch is set to. Then what you would do is you click on settings, IP address, it will bring up this window, which has got quite a bit of information on it, but you want to make sure that you have got the right network address section uh, selected here at the bottom. Uh, the default IP address of the cameras is 192.168.5 range. And once you've configured it, we've just configured it to our network here in the dot two range. You would click the search button and you would automatically then see the camera populates here. Now you'll see there's two IP addresses here. There's a panoramic IP and a close-up IP. As we mentioned earlier, there are two network ports um, as well on these cameras, one for the panoramic camera and, and one for the close-up camera, which in this case is your, your PTZ camera. You would then uh, click on teacher tracking and click confirm. And now we have selected that camera as the camera that the software will be controlling at this point. So if the camera was active before, you would potentially have the camera started already to do the tracking. If that is the case, then you would click the stop button to stop tracking so that we can enter the configuration menu of the camera. If it's a first use, then the camera has not been set up, then you don't need to press stop. You can just click on configure to get into the configuration side. So I'm just gonna click the stop button there and then click on configure. Now you would see that there are basically two screens here. The one screen shows the PTZ camera, the zoom camera. And the second camera here shows the panoramic camera or the wide angle lens camera. And so this camera here on the left hand side would be one IP address and that camera on the right hand side is the other IP address. Now there's a few things here to, to configure. Um, because we've already set it up, I'm just going to click on view panoramic position 
and you will see that that zooms my camera out to my scene that I set for the wide view of my camera. And that's basically my panoramic view. If I would want to adjust my panoramic view, I can zoom my camera in and adjust it as I would, would like to, and zoom it back out, whatever the case might be. And then I can click Save Panoramic Position, and it would save that position as a new position. I don't want to save that right now because we have already got a view saved. So I just clicked on View Panoramic Position, and it brought that back. Now, similarly, I can click on View Platform Position. And in this case, that is the size of the zoom level and the zoom heights for the pan and tilt that we've set up uh, for the camera. And again, I can go ahead and make those adjustments however I'd like to, and I can zoom it in, zoom it out. And again, just then click on Save Platform Position to get it to store that uh, zoom level of the image. So that's the basics of the panoramic and platform views and how to set those up. Now, on the right-hand side here, there's uh, quite a lot of information as well. Basically, the first window we're going to look at here is our target lost area. So that is the selection to tell the camera what it must do once it loses tracking of the, the target. So in this case, we've set it to panoramic view, which means that that is the view that the camera would return to once it has lost the, the subject. If I were to set that to platform presets, it means that this would be the default view that the camera would go to once it has lost the target. I can then also press uh, or select maintain original position, which means that let's say for instance, the camera had been in this position and the subject that walked off the platform area on the left-hand side, then it would remain in that position until it finds the target again, and then it would start tracking the target again. So we'll just leave it in panoramic position. The next window down here, or the next area down, is our tracking settings. So there we can set it to auto zoom, which means it would only zoom in and out once it tracks a target. We can have it only on vertical selection, so it will only tilt up and down. And then lastly, we can have all the way tracking, which is all parameters, pan tilt and zoom. Now, the area on the right hand side here, or this window that's labeled as area, that is our, our key area that we want to set up. That would define and determine what areas is being tracked, what areas are not being tracked, what areas are masked, and how uh, our zoom and our pan and tilt respond. So in this case, the first area there is the platform area, and you'll see this white block has been selected as a platform area. Now I can click anywhere in this window and just set up a new platform area uh, as I please. I can make that area bigger, I can make that area smaller, um, that basically is the area that we want the camera to zoom towards once it has selected the target or found the target and started tracking the target. So that area is really just a simple click and drag to set up. The next option here is the teacher track area. And you'll see once I select that, it gives us a red line around the area that must be tracked. So this defines the area that the target is in. And if a target is inside the tracking area, um, then that's where the camera would track that person. And similarly, the platform area is also part of the area that gets used for the tracking. So this area, again, can be set up by simply clicking, dragging the mouse. I can, in this case, ignore the presentation screen on the right hand side there. And once I have my area, I can just right click on my mouse to close the box and that becomes my new teacher tracking area. The last area here is my masks. The masks are used to select areas that you do not want to be tracked. So in this case, we've selected that black absorbers at the back there, as well as the door, the television screen, and the front row of seats here for the classroom. So basically that means that we do not want the camera to focus on these areas and track any subject in those areas, uh, obviously unless they are already being tracked by the camera. So we don't want the camera in this case to default to any of those positions to, to track. And again, this is quite a simple setup. I can basically just click and drag over the areas that I want to have set up. 
in auto, I can activate and deactivate any of the areas as I wish to turn them on and off for the purposes of masking them for tracking. Once I have set up my parameters, I can click on the save parameter button here and that would store that information into my camera. In addition, there's also an advanced menu. So once I click on advanced parameters, there's a couple of extra additional sensitivities and controls that I can set up. The first parameter here is my action sensitivity. The second one is my horizontal speed. The third one, my vertical speed. And this is how quickly the camera pans and tilts based on tracking the subject. And again, these are set up from a slow to a fast reaction time. I can also set up my zoom range. If I increase my zoom range, it means it would have a bigger range that it zooms and it would zoom closer to my subject. The lost time out is basically the lost target. So once it loses the target, this is how quickly the camera would revert back to the panoramic position or the target lost area that has been selected. So we've just selected it to, to three seconds. So as you saw earlier, once I moved away from the tracking area, it took about three seconds or so, and the camera defaulted back to the panoramic view. Lastly, the down platform sensitivity is how far it tracks a target off from the, the platform area. On the right hand side here is a few action codes that can be sent out. Now these action codes you can change and you can type in any string commands that you would want to send out. And basically what would happen that if the target is lost or the target is locked in this case, the camera would send out that command. If you, for instance, uh, walk off the platform area, the camera would send those commands, or if a person moves uh, in front of the camera or stops moving, it can, send, it can send different commands. And you could basically use this to, for instance, mute or unmute a microphone. So let's say it locks on a target. You can send a command here to your control system to unmute the microphone. And let's say the teacher or the presenter walks away from the platform area, walks off of stage, whatever the case might be, then you can send a mute command once that target is lost to the control system if you were using a third party control system. So as I mentioned, once you've saved all the parameters, then you come back to the main screen, you can close that screen, come back to the main screen and hit the start button. And once a subject walks back in front of the camera into the target area, then the camera would uh, resume tracking that subject. If you have any further questions, please get in touch with us or visit our webpage at alphatronelectronics.com. Thank you for joining us. See you again next time.